I want you to get hip. <laughs> I want you to get hip to this timely tip about the iFi hip DAC. Looks like this. It's very tiny. It's very good. It's very hip. It's very happening. It's very now. But seriously, I feel guilty. I haven't reviewed that many DACs, portable DACs. I don't know. It's just not really my thing. I used to. I used to do a bunch of them, but I kind of I lost interest. I was bored by portable DACs. They weren't that good. They were too much money. They, they just didn't grab me. But this one, well, I'm impressed that the very brave people at iFi sent me one because they kind of sh they, they should have known that I don't do this sort of thing. But they took a chance, sent this to me, and I'm glad they did because it really is uh, it's a very above average uh, contender for its size and price. The price is $149. So the price is right, right? Now it is. They have a thing about DSD over at iFi. I'm not sure why. I don't know if there's any music on uh, DSD that I give a crap about, but some people do. Some people do, and it could be you. So the DSD uh, high, high, high res goes up to 256. There's also DXD. I have no idea what that is, except it's I assume some sort of DSD format. Uh, it also does uh, PCM, good old PCM does PCM up to 384, that sampling rate, and 32-bit. It's Again, I don't know what you could possibly hear that's any... Well, okay, I'm just speaking for me. I don't know what I could hear at 384 that I would want to hear, spend any time listening to. But I'm glad it's in there. I'm glad for you people out there that are into super-duper high-res stuff, God bless, enjoy. Why should I rain on your parade? Uh, what else can I tell you? Well, it's got uh, it's got uh, this button here that makes the bass bassier. If you're into more bass, you can get a little more by hitting that button. It's not oh, it's not obnoxious or anything. It's just a little more bass. Uh, then there's this button here on the end that is some sort of headphone uh, adaptive circuit that makes it match your headphones. All I found when I hit that button was it played louder. Um, there's a headphone jack for good old fashioned 3.5 millimeter and a 4.4 millimeter for balanced connection. If you have balanced headphones running 4.4, we got it covered here. Round back, there are no analog inputs, none, zero, zilch, but there is a USB uh, 3 and the uh, USB C is just for charging purposes to charge this guy. And charging takes about three hours and you get 12 hours of playtime. The case is all metal, analyzed aluminum. The, the volume control here is brass. For 149 bucks, this is a very solid piece of kit, as you Brits say. It's, it's really, really nicely done. But none of that would matter if it also didn't sound good. And in fact, it sounds really good. <laughs> to find out, here's what I did. I hooked up my Sennheiser Momentum over-the-ear headphones. And I used, at first, the Apple uh, Lightning to 3.5 millimeter adapter that goes for about 10 bucks. And I listened, and I thought, sounds good. Sennheiser's Momentum, it's good, nice headphone. Then I thought, hmm, oh, that, what, about, what about this thing? Does it actually sound better than the, than the little $10 dongle? So. I use the Apple camera kit between the hip deck and uh, my phone, and I listened again. And guess what? It definitely sounded better. It sounded more transparent, detailed, clarity, all the good touchy, feely things about sound quality all jumped up a couple of notches. Definitely a good thing. Returning to the dongle, it sounded opaque, dull, lifeless dynamically flatter. No, once you hear how good your headphones can sound, uh, you know, I'm assuming, by the way, if you've gotten this far in the video, that you're listening to wired headphones. You haven't been beaten into submission by getting a Bluetooth headphone. You're still listening to wired headphones because you're still listening to a wired headphone because you know that wired headphones tend to sound almost always, I shouldn't say 10, they, 98% of the time, they sound better than their Bluetooth equivalent models, you know, dollar for dollar. I'm being generous, maybe it's 100%. But the point is, you've gotten this far in the video, I assume you're listening to wired headphones, and I thank you for that. 
the world thanks you for that because they just sound better. You know, I'm, I'm joking around, but wired headphones still have a place in this universe. So anyway, that's where this comes in. The hip DAC can make your wired headphone sound more better. That's the point here. So things are going so well, I decided to step up to uh, a better sounding headphone, but also from Sennheiser. Well, Sennheiser mass drop the HD 6XX, which is an open backed headphone. The momentum is closed. And yes, the open headphone sounded <laughs> more open. Yes, siree. <laughs> Once you hear how good the 6XX is, eh, that's why I haven't listened that much to the momentum lately. Anyway, things were going very, very well. So at that point, I thought, well, let me see how well the hip DAC performs as a USB DAC on my desktop with my Mac mini computer. So hook that up and I started to listen to title. Oh, which reminds me, the hip DAC has MQA for super duper high res. And uh, so I played some of those files. And yes, siri, Bob, um, it was pretty, pretty amazing. Now, I, I can't say it sounded better because it was high res or because it was uh, Tidal. It just, it just was. It just sounded really, really good. Um, but those are kind of expensive headphones, sort of a little bit, right? So I wanted to step down in headphone quality or headphone price at least. And I pulled out my Tin Hi-Fi T4 in-ear headphones. They're less than a hundred bucks. And I hooked them up and stuck them in my ear, my ear holes. And again, now, in a way I was even happier because that means for around $250 between the hip DAC and the T4, you can get really, really nice sound from your phone and also from your desktop desktop or laptop or whatever wherever you're listening to music in its digital form <clears throat> the hip deck can take you there to finish up I hooked up a set of Audacy LCD one planner magnetic on-ear headphones are they on ear mm, I think so they could be over here but they're really small over the years but in any case the LCD one and that guy which is 400 bucks is definitely better than all the other headphones I use. It is just more there. And oh, and I played this really interesting recording by Chrissy Hyde. Now you know her, or you, if you knew her, she was in the band The Pretenders, great 70s punk rock band. And I gotta say, she's matured nicely. And she did this record called uh, The Bone Ensemble. Funny name, funny name for her, but I'm putting it up right now. And it's kind of a quirky big band record. Now, it's not big band like Count Basie or Duke Ellington. It's, it's, it's much hipper, especially because it's a hip DAC. It's a hipper, quirkier, larger ensemble than a rock band. And she's playing in standards with them. And she did this version of Caroline No, the, the Beach Boys song. And she just owned it. And I just felt her her intimacy to the microphone. She was right there and it just sounded great. And these quirky arrangements with brass and cool things going on, electronics. It's a really fascinating record actually. Um, and she sounds so comfortable doing it. Um, it was really, really nice. Oh, and I also played uh, the score for Joker, the movie. And it's it's got it's creepy as it should be for that film and it's got that's actually the best sounding recording I played and that's also in uh, MQA I think it is and um, there's some parts with low strings low basses and cellos and they're really digging in and just I'm getting goosebumps thinking about how well that combination of uh, the hip deck and the LCD one was was rocking my world so I think I've said my piece. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Right now, coming to you five or six days a week, usually five. And uh, if you dig it, please, I urge you strongly, subscribe. Hit that button right down there. When you do, don't do it too quick. When you hit that button, you'll see a little bell icon. 
got to hit that bell to get notified every time there's an exciting new episode of this thing, this thing that I do. Um, while you're here right now, though, you should check out my playlist. I have playlists for headphone reviews and speaker reviews and amplifier reviews and music reviews and interviews with industry luminaries like Nelson Pass from Pass Labs and John Atkinson from Stereophile, all kinds of good stuff there. John DeVore from DeVore Fidelity, a Brooklyn speaker company. Lots of good stuff. And what else can I tell you about? Well, you can follow me on Twitter at Audiophiliac Man. You can follow me on Instagram at Steve.Guttenberg. Best of all, best of all by far is the Patreon. You can find that at P A T R E O N dot com slash audiophiliac and now I think I am actually done so I can say thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you back here again very very soon bye bye